Welcome to part three. So we are on the third section of this step-by-step -step guide in deploying a Laravel application from scratch. If you missed the first two parts, make sure you catch those before you move on to step three, as we are getting into more advanced SSL certificates in this one and some extra credit stuff that we wanna do for our prompt. So in our previous episode, we were able to load our project inside our droplet. So up next, I wanna set up Let's Encrypt. And what Let's Encrypt will let us do is have an SSL certificate so we can serve over a secure network as opposed to just a regular HTTP non-secure domain. So in order for you to actually get Let's Encrypt, you do have to have a domain name. So that is a requirement for being able to get an SSL certificate. We can no longer rely on our IP. So I have my domains set up in DigitalOcean. So I'll actually add a subdomain and be able to have a domain for this demonstration. So let me take care of that now. In DigitalOcean, you go to the networking tab down here and then to my coders tape domain, I can add an A record and the A record is gonna be just Laravel. And you see here, you get a preview. That's gonna be laravel.coderstape.com. And our resource is gonna be that first project droplet that we've been working on. So let me create that record now and we are good to go. So if everything worked, we can visit laravel.coderstape.com and get the exact same project. So we do have a domain set up for our project now. It's as simple as that. Now DigitalOcean makes this extremely simple. So that is one nice thing with DigitalOcean. You saw we added that and immediately we were able to use it right away. Great, so let's move on. So let me add the CertBot. CertBot is a program that will actually allow us to get the certification for our project. So the first thing you need to do is add the repository and then we can actually get CertBot working. So let's give that a minute and we'll be right back. And there we go. Let's move on to step two. So now we're gonna install the actual CertBot for Nginx. Hit paste. Yes, we do want to install. And let's give that a minute. We'll be right back. Great. Let's move on to the next step. So this next one, I'm gonna copy the command and we do need to modify it a little bit. I'll clear the terminal so it's nice and clean. So the first thing you see here is we have this dash D example.com and then another dash D www.example.com. So this would be obviously in the case where you have a www and a non www domain name. In my case, I am actually in a subdomain, so I just need the one. And mine is laravel.coderstape.com. Perfect. So now the other thing we have to change is obviously our web root path. It is var www html and then first project slash public. And that's it. So this is our final command here. sudo cert bot and then the web root path is var www html then whatever you named your project slash public and our domain name like i said is required laravel.coderstape.com this is my particular one obviously made the correct modifications for your system i'll hit okay an email address is required all right so let me give it an email address victor at coderstape.com do you agree of course you have to say a to agree would you be willing to share your email address i typically say no and now we're obtaining a new certificate and we're waiting for it to get certified. And there we are. It's as easy as that. So now our certificate is in our droplet. Now take a look at this right here. This is obviously where your certificates got put. It's nice that it outputs where it is because we will need that in just a couple of minutes. All right, so how do we actually use it? So to use it, we actually have to modify our Nginx. So up until this point, we've been using port 80. However, SSL HTTPS requests are actually on port 443. So we're gonna modify our Nginx configuration to this one. And this is the production ready Nginx configuration that we've been working towards in all of the previous lessons. So let's run through it really quickly. So the first thing is we're still gonna be listening at port 80, but the reason why we're gonna be listening in port 80 is because we actually wanna do a 301 redirect, which is a permanent redirect, to exactly the same thing that came in 
but using HTTPS. So this is the step that if any request comes into our server requesting a non-secure URL, we simply switch that over to an HTTPS URL. That way we are serving it over our secure SSL and not through regular unsecure. So then we're going to create another server. This time we're going to be listening over 443 SSL HTTP2. We will have to put our domain name in server name. And of course, we'll have to change this first project. Now, here's that SSL certificate that we just generated. Notice that the address here is etc. Let's encrypt live and then the domain name. So the same thing here, it will need to be modified to whatever your domain name is. We'll take care of that in just a second. And then everything else remains the same. We're still fetching PHP. We're still rejecting all HD access files and this dot well known we're going to allow that is actually for our SSL certificates to be able to get renewed. That's more of an advanced topic, but I will copy this entire block right here. And for the final time, let's go into our sites available and modify our Nginx configuration. So that would be sudo vim, etc. Nginx sites available, and then laravel.coderstape.com. And let's delete everything inside this file now. And let's paste in that entire block from the guide. All right. So what do we have to change here? Well, the first thing we need to change is we need to make sure that the SSL certificates are in the correct place. Notice this placeholder right here and this placeholder right here. We need to change both of those. So let's do that now. Laravel dot coders tape dot com. And then same thing in this other placeholder. That's laravel.coderstape.com. What else do we need to change? If you did not use first dash project, you do need to change that here. And up until this point, we've been using server name. We've been using the IP, but since I actually set up a proper domain name, I'm going to use that now. So laravel.coderstape.com. And let's change it over here one more time. Laravel.coderstape.com. All right, so we are good to go. So this is our final Nginx configuration file. Again, we are setting up two servers. One is going to be unsecured and one is going to be secure. This one just simply redirects to our secure server. So that's it. This is good to go. I'm going to hit escape colon WQ to save and exit. And let's move on to the next step. So now we can run that test one more time just to make sure that everything is running good. And we get OK and successful. Perfect. So now we need to modify our firewall. Up until this point, we've been serving HTTP requests, but we need to be able to serve HTTPS requests as well, not just HTTP. So we can allow that by simply running sudo UFW allow Nginx HTTPS. All right. So now that rule was added. Again, you can run the status command just to verify that the changes took effect. And sure enough, we are serving open SSH, HTTP and HTTPS requests. And finally, let's do an Nginx reload, hit paste, and we're good to go. So now let's test it out in the browser. Notice that I'm not secure right now. I'm going to hit refresh and with any luck, we'll be in HTTPS refresh. And we're good to go. Notice the little lock right here. So we are serving this site as a secure connection. Perfect. So we are good to go. At this point, you can quit. Everything is set up in our server. But if you stick around for a couple of more minutes, I do want to do some modifications to my prop just to make it look a little bit better. You're going to spend a lot of time in the server. And sometimes it's just nice to see something nice instead of just your plain text. So we're just going to follow all of this. So the first thing we're going to do is install C shell. C shell is very similar to shell, except that it's got some extra sugar on it that I think you're going to like. And if you really get into this stuff, you're going to see that over time, you're going to need a little bit more power with your terminal. So let's copy that command and run that now. Paste. We'll say yes to install that. All right. Now, if you run this command, we can confirm that everything was installed. And sure enough, we have C shell. 5.5.1. Now we need to find out where C shell is because we need to make that the default. So if we run this command, we see that it's under user bin C shell. Okay. 
So now let's go ahead and modify that as the default. So now we actually need to reboot our entire droplet just to take that effect. So it will log me out. I'll wait a couple of seconds and then log back in. All right, let's try it again. And we're in. So the first time that you run C shell, it will actually run a quick setup for you. So if you did everything right with the installation, this is the screen that you get the next time that you log in. So we just want to populate a standard C shell RC file. So I'll go ahead and click two. And we are good to go. So you notice that right away, our prompt looks a little different. Now let's install Powerline and the font Powerline. Again, all of this is just to make our prompt a little prettier. So we'll install a nice font. Looks like I mistyped my password. There we go. We'll hit yes. All right. And now let's install the power level 9K theme. This is one of my favorite themes. So I'm going to let you in on a secret. I think you're going to really like this power level 9K. So now we need to enable it. So to enable it, we're going to echo the theme into our C shell RC file. Let's do that now. And then we need to exit and we need to connect back in. And there we go. We have a really nice prompt now. And if you CD into a directory, for example, now you have a nice path of exactly where you are. You also get this other stuff over here, which will actually interact with Git and all that stuff. And if you've been following along with this series from the very beginning, this probably looks familiar to you. This is the theme that I use every single day. So this is how you install that. You can install this in your local machine as well, not just in your server. All right. So one final thing I want to do is just install Oh My C Shell. This is just another powerful utility that you can install. And if you do some research, you'll see that Oh My C Shell actually has some really powerful Git integration. So this is really cool. So the final step is we actually do need to re-enable our theme. So let me copy that, paste that in. And then let me exit out and log back in. And there we are. So that is it for the bit of extra credit. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You now have a fully deployed Laravel application with everything needed to get started with your project. If you have any questions, drop a line in the comments and I'll try to answer those for you. As always, thanks for following along. Don't forget to subscribe and we do have a little bit more in this series. So when you're ready, let's move on to the next episode.